Right, I'm outside again, but this time it's thematically appropriate because I've decided to make a book video. I'm going to talk about some books that have really changed how I view the world, particularly nature. So, those books in particular are The Atlas of Lost Islands, The Cloud Spotter's Guide, and The Invention of Nature by Judith Shalansky, Gavin Prater Pinney, and Andrea Wolf, respectively. I hope you like it. Let's get to it. So the Atlas of Remote Islands is a catalogue of 50 islands, uh, drawings of them done gorgeously, and their stories. The author grew up in East Germany and couldn't travel, and so made up stories about different places in her family's atlas. But this collection of very real stories is perhaps, if not wilder than fiction, certainly a fair bit creepier. There are lone scientists, mad lighthouse, lighthouse keepers, and a fair amount of murder. For example, there's this one small atoll covered in thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of orange crabs, and they're just stranded there, out there in the ocean. The soldiers eventually die, or chase after ships that aren't there, until one man is left and terrorizes of of the remaining women, until eventually he too is killed, and the women rescued by a passing ship. These are the kind of tales and the atmosphere that make it such a great read. The Cloud Spotter's Guide. It's a much more light-hearted thing, the first publication of the Cloud Appreciation Society, and it gives a wonderful little happy overview of what makes a cloud, what kinds of clouds are there, and it talks a little bit about the history of it. It's got plenty of fun little illustrations inside, and it's very easy to follow. Like, you do not need to know really anything to understand it. But yeah, there are still plenty of fascinating tidbits, like the fact that before people studied clouds, they all just sort of drew an average cloud. But after people understood and broke them down into categories, then suddenly you see that people paint clouds much better. Understanding effects representation is the meaning of that. And lastly, with the invention of nature, it's a biography, a telling of the life and times of Alexander von Humboldt, a really, truly fascinating man who spent his entire fortune and acted like a machine just travelling the world, making measurements and coming up with theories. The reason the book is called The Invention of Nature is because, very much so, and in part, he invented many of the ideas um, that affect how we think of nature today, like the idea of, you know, environments being connected, or the fact that humans can affect the environment. Um, he was, you know, the first person to come to all of these. He was a great connector of ideas, and without him, it would have taken a lot longer for us to understand all of these separate little parts. It's a very exciting story. Like, it reads like an adventure tale, but one that happens to be real. More things are named after Alexander von Humboldt than anyone else, and if you read this, you'll really understand why. So yeah, that was it. I hope you liked it. I really cannot recommend all of those books enough. I find it really interesting to, you know, just look at nature through a different lens, because as a physicist, I'm always so used to you know, looking at things in minute detail that things on a grander scale can often be lost, so it's always really exciting. If there are any uh, books that have changed how you view the world, nature, biology, I don't know, uh, then do let me know uh, down there, and yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.